Hello, my friends. A very good morning. And that the Spirit of the Most High may bless our meditation on His Holy Word. And that you may be able to understand the meaning of every word that you may put it into practice in your life and then you may be able to be blessed here in this earth. Very well, still speaking about the rich man and Lazarus, the holy text says that there was a rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen. In other words, Jesus gives a hint on who this rich man was. He didn't give a name. He didn't give a name because he was not worthy on having his name pronounced, said by the Lord Jesus. And also, there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, full of sores, leprosy, who was laid at his gate, the rich man's gate, two extremes. And we said yesterday that the poor, the beggar, Lazarus, Jesus gave him the name of Lazarus. Rather, he had the name Lazarus. And he says that he desiring to be fed with the crumbs was the desire of Lazarus. <laughs> When we meditate on these words, it's so strong. Everybody has a desire on making money, having success, having this or that. But the beggar, poor him, who could even have the right on desiring to have a better life, isn't it? But he only wanted to satisfy his hunger to satisfy his hunger. And because of that, então, then he came to pass away because he was in a critical, chaotic situation and very unfair by the eyes of men, not by the eyes of God, because if the beggar had in the place, have been in the place of the rich man, he would have done the same that the rich man had done. And if the rich man had the place, have been in the place of the beggar, Lazarus, he would have done the same. Why, Bishop? Because, dear friends, the easiness, the facilities that the rich men have impedes them on counting, depending on God and in the faith, on living on the dependence of the Most High. And that is what led him to be taken to hell because he depended on his wealth, the facilities, the luxury, etc. In the other hand, the poor Lazarus, he didn't have on what or on who to depend or count on. He only counted on God, only on God. He preserved inside of him that hope, even a small one, but a hope that will preserve his faith, that one day the God of his father, Abraham, would come and take him out of that situation. And that preserved him to be saved. And then the text, the following one says, and now it comes the death. So it was, that the beggar died. <laughs> this is so strong. The beggar died. And what happened? 
Jesus does not speak on what happened to his body, most probably buried on a tomb, on a grave, without anybody watching, no prayers, no nothing. Most probably he was buried in an unknown place by anybody. But his soul was taken by the angels to the Abraham's bosom. In other words, the place where Abraham was, which is the celestial kingdom, which is the kingdom of our Lord Jesus. So you can verify that the beggar was buried, thrown most probably on a shallow grave, not considered by anybody, but honored by God, who sent his angels to carry, to collect his soul and to take him to the celestial kingdom. Do you understand now the benefit on the person dying in the faith, in the hope, in the expectation on one day being rescued by God himself? Very well. That happened to Lazarus. It was fulfilled, his hope, his faith. Parallel to this, on the other side, also the rich man died. That's all. Jesus says, the rich man also died and was buried. See that Jesus does not say that the beggar died and was buried, but says, he says that the rich man died and was buried. And now you can imagine the parade on the burial of the rich man, people crying for him. Let's put this way, a huge, luxurious ceremony that was done when the rich man died. Which means the glory of the rich man was consumed when he died, when a burial of high luxury was done and only high authorities could be there. Miserable ones like Lazarus, they could not have such a thing. And then people suck up to him even after his death. But it doesn't say a thing about his soul. You can verify here. So it was that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. So he went straight to the point. And also, in regards to the rich man, also died and was buried. And I imagine what type of burial he received, which is what happened to the rich ones, the powerful ones, that everybody follow on social media, or media in general. Think well, dear friends. Reason about it, please. What do you expect after your death? A sumptuous burial, a glorious one? Or do you expect to have your soul taken by the angels to Abraham's bosom or the Lord Jesus' bosom? Because on those days in Babylon, Jesus had not been embodied in this world yet. So the faith that there was on those times was the faith in the God of Abraham. That's why Abraham is called the father of faith of the people of Israel. So faith of the 
poor man was in the God of Abraham. Obviously, where Abraham was, that soul that believed like Abraham would go to. And the rich man was buried. For sure, very sumptuously. And then the following verse comes. And being in torments, in hades, Jesus is speaking, and in hades. Look at the situation of the rich man, the spiritual situation of the beggar Lazarus. He said, and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom, which means the soul detached from the body of Lazarus and was taken straight away to Abraham's bosom. But the rich man, Quite the contrary. He was buried and nothing else was said. He doesn't say anything about his soul. He only says that in hell, in hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and saw Abraham afar off. And saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Tomorrow, we're going to continue on this topic, but it's important that you may verify that in hell, in hell, see that the rich man was buried. His body stayed here. He didn't take his body to hell. But when he entered hell, then, for sure, I believe, that's how I believe. The Bible does not say, but I believe in this way. I predict that he received a body, a different body, that could support, handle the fire of hell, the fire of hell. And in this body, he had eyes. He lifted up his eyes, being in torments. And also had a mouth. Because he cried to Abraham. Well, tomorrow we're going to speak about this. God bless you all. And I want to congratulate all the work that the Holy Spirit has been doing until today. Since the inauguration of the Universal Church of the Kingdom of God 45 years ago. 45 years ago, the Holy Spirit rose this work. In reality, this work started at the death of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And He resurrected and rose to heaven and sent His Holy Spirit to give continuation to His work here on earth. And the Holy Spirit has been doing this, which means the work of the Universal Church of the Kingdom of God has already started there on the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. So praised may be His name, enlarged, May his name be. He is the only one who is worthy of all honor, glory, and praise. And for this, because of this, there will be very soon on Templo TV, channel 10, to give honor, or rather, to recognize publicly the greatness, glory, and praise of our Lord Jesus Christ that through His Holy Spirit created this work that runs throughout the world in the name of the Lord Jesus. God bless you and until tomorrow in the name of the Lord. Amen.